Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today I want to introduce you to my new favorite all-in-one Raspberry Pi device. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So this is the EVI CIV Raspberry Pi tablet. And while it's similar to the Raspad that I brought you guys uh, recently, it is not identical. And we'll kind of be discussing some of those differences as we go through this video. But before we get to that, I do want to let you guys know this was sent to me free of charge so that I could take it and review it and play with it. Now, unlike the Raspad video that I did where I did a video right out of the gate, I decided not to do that this time. I wanted to actually take this thing out into the field and get some experience with it before I brought it to you guys. So I've had this for the last four or five weeks now, and I've had several opportunities to take it out into the field and do some testing with it. And I'm really, really pleasantly surprised with this tablet. Now first, let's talk about the price. The price comes in at $159.95. However, there is a $30 coupon right now on Amazon, bringing the total price down to $129.95. I don't consider that too terribly bad when you compare it to something like the Raspberry Pad's official 7-inch screen, which comes in at $80. Bucks, and I just don't think it's quite as polished as this guy is. Although, I do want to discuss something with you in just a minute because this could use a little bit more polishing as well. Now, one of my favorite things about this device is its low power draw. Running from this BioNO 12-volt uh, battery here, I'm only drawing roughly 700 milliamps. Now, when you take into account that the Pi itself is drawing 350 milliamps, that's not too bad for power consumption on a 10 inch screen. So I'm really, really pleasantly surprised with that. And it's one of my favorite things. Speaking of that, I am running it off of a 12 volt source. That's the default for this particular tablet. So once I got this thing out of the box and got everything put together, I did go ahead and load up build a Pi, which you can see running on it right now. And I coupled that with the IC705. And it is an absolutely fantastic combination. I was able to use the 705's built-in sound card and the built-in GPS. And then I used FL Rig to control the entire setup. So that gave me full rig control over it. And I was able to do all of that with only one cable running between the tablet and the 705. I do find that this screen is pretty much the ideal size for field work. It's a 10 inch uh, screen that we have with us. It's got plenty of brightness from all of the testing that I've done so far in the field. It's got uh, good angles of view so you, can, you don't have to be dead on to that monitor to really be able to see what's going on with it. You can see it uh, even when you're off at an angle just a little bit. And it's got uh, good resolution. I believe it's 1280 by 800 if I remember correctly. And I find that that gave me plenty of real estate on the screen to be able to run applications like JSA Call or if I wanted to run WinLink where we've got two or three windows open at the same time, I had plenty of screen real estate to spread everything out and be able to see what I needed when I was making those connections. Now, I've already mentioned that this guy runs from a 12 volt source and that is absolutely perfect because it pairs up nicely with the batteries that we're already carrying into the field to power the radios. Now, one question I had, and I always have this anytime we're converting uh, 12 volts to something else, whether that's five volts or three volts or whatever, is there any RFI noise? And I'm happy to report that I have not been able to detect any RFI noise coming off of this tablet. Like almost every device that we pick up and try to use in the field, there's always trade-offs, and this guy is no exception. It doesn't have the built-in batteries like the Raspad had. I would like to see built-in batteries 
for this device, but if that's going to uh, make it so that we can't charge it from 12 volts in the field or we can't run it from 12 volts in the field, then I'm perfectly happy by not having those batteries uh, to have to worry about keeping charged and using more power when we're in the field and we do need to recharge them. If I can just run this thing off of a 12 volt source, uh, then I can live without those internal batteries. One of the other things that I really do not like about this device, uh, and there is a workaround for it, is this little USB cord in the back uh, that comes out of one of the plastic holes and has to plug into uh, one of the USB ports on the back of the Pi. I just think they could have found a better solution from this. However, there is a way if you're uh, brave enough, and after I've had some time to use this in the field, I may actually go this route. You can actually solder three leads direct to your Raspberry Pi board and get rid of this USB cable coming out of the back. Something else that I don't like about this is uh, accessing the micro SD card. Uh, unfortunately, with this particular tablet, we have to disassemble uh, or at least remove four screws off of the back to be able to access the Raspberry Pi and get to that SD card. It would have been nice had they have brought that out to the back so that we could access it without having to disassemble anything. But uh, how often do you have to remove your micro SD card? I know in several of the Pis that I run, I almost never remove the SD card. So Again, that's something that I can uh, live with, although I prefer to have access to the SD card externally. Something else that I'm just not a big fan of is that on-screen keyboard that I've mentioned in the past. The Matchbox keyboard works okay, but it's still not the best solution. Now, I was recommended another one called Onboard. I haven't gotten a chance to test that one, but I may try to load that one up onto here as well and see if it's any better than the Matchbox keyboard. I was actually unaware of this uh, other on-screen keyboard called Onboard until earlier this morning, but I do want to take a look at that and see if it's any uh, if it's any improvement whatsoever. Um, I'm, I'm just not a fan of the on-screen keyboards with these devices. Uh, so it may mean that I've got to take an external tablet into the, or not an external tablet, an external keyboard rather, into the field if I plan to do very much typing. If you're going to do something quick uh, and easy, then this is probably not an issue using the on-screen keyboard. But if you want to compose longer emails or have a long drawn out QSO on JSA call, you might find that an external keyboard suits your purposes better. And that brings us to the bottom line. Will this find a place in my lineup uh, when I'm going out into the field? Well, honestly, I'm undetermined right now. Um, I've used a tablet with a Raspberry Pi for so long that it's really kind of got to be a superstar of a product before it's going to replace that in my lineup. However, I am going to give this some more time and see what I think about it uh, long term. I do like the fact that it's an all-in-one unit. Uh, I do like the fact that I can run it from a 12-volt source. And when I don't have to bring that tablet with me, well, that's one less thing that I have to worry about keeping charged before I head off into the field or having to recharge once I get into the field. So I'm kind of torn on this right now. Um, but like I said, I do like it. I've had a very pleasant experience with it so far, and I do plan to do some more field testing. Hopefully, it's going to remain paired up with the 705 when we're in the field. If I find any different or I run into any major issues with this, I'll be back to let you guys know. Thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to give us a thumbs up if you found this video helpful, and we will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3. Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, I want to introduce you to my... Today, I want to intro... Why can I not say introduce? Introduce, introduce. Come on, let's try it again. And I'm not looking at the camera. All right, let's try it again. Today, I want to introduce you to my... I still can't say introduce you to. Introduce you to. Introduce you to. Come on, let's try it again.